And we hope that all the students in Nabata State will learn from all the various topics that will be discussed. My name is Dr. Uzoma Okafo, an assistant professor of forensic science. For the first person to speak today, we have Dr. Roger Luanga, criminal justice professor. Um, we have Dr. Samuel Andrews, and we have some other professors that will be speaking to us today. Also, I would just like to mention briefly, this year marks the 20th year of forensic science in Albany State University. And we are still watching very strong, stronger by each year, stronger by faculty level, stronger by students orientation. We've been so glad that our students are among the best in Albany State if not the best in urban states. We are so glad that we have our graduation rates ever increasing, our retention rates high. We are so glad that we have a functional lab and we have a full accreditation by FIPAC for the next five years. This will be the third time we'll be accredited. And the good news is that we still remain the only fully accredited program in the state of Georgia and the best in South part of America. So if you are one of our program students, I would like you to stand up this morning and just clap for yourself because you are one of the few that are lucky to be part of this program. This week is for you, we're celebrating you, we're bringing new topics to you, we're making you known worldwide. I would like to quickly call on Dr. Roger Luanga. Before coming to the podium, I would like to read his short bios. Dr. Roger Luanga is a professor of criminal justice is an adjunct professor of law at Emory Law School and a fellow on human trafficking and forced labor. A human rights activist, a publisher, and a renowned professor in child labor. He will be talking on trafficking in persons for sexual exploitation. I welcome Dr. Roger Luanga. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Okafor, for this uh, introduction. As, uh, uh, as I mentioned, my name is uh, Dr. Luanga, and uh, I'm a professor. Uh, in criminal justice department here at Albany State University. And uh, I'll be speaking on uh, one of the most important topics uh, in, uh, in our country, not in the country, but uh, uh, in the world, concerning the situation of uh, human trafficking for sexual exploitation, which is also considered as a, a part of the modern slavery. Uh, some of the points that uh, I'll be uh, discussing or covering include, for instance, what is the definition of sex trafficking? What is sex trafficking? And uh, what are the causes of sex trafficking? What are the factors leading women and men to be subjected to sex trafficking? And what are laws protecting people against sex trafficking, even at the domestic and at international levels? And what is the scope of the problem? How many people are subjected to sex trafficking or other form of trafficking around the world? And what are the punishment against sex trafficker or other trafficker? And of course, we cannot talk about the causes of sex trafficking without talking about the consequences of sex trafficking. Are there any consequences against 
victim of sex trafficking? If so, what are those consequences? And finally, what, uh, what should, we, uh, should we do or when we are victim of sex trafficking or we are aware about a friend who's involved or subjected to sex trafficking? These are some of the questions that uh, I'll be discussing this morning. But before that, I would like us uh, to watch a short clip. Women are being trafficked. Children are being trafficked. They just don't wake up saying, I want to be a prostitute. This is happening in our neighborhoods, in our communities. It really hides in the shadows. I'm scarred, and I'll be scarred for life. It is modern day slavery. I knew I was for sale. America has a growing sex trafficking problem, and Atlanta is one of the hotspots. I hope to God I never have to use it. Is that how dangerous these streets are? Mm hmm Yeah. That it's best for you to be armed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you never know. Casey McClure is a street outreach worker, showing us a notorious area on the outskirts of the city. So what's going on over there? Um, There's a girl sat on the floor yeah. with a group of guys. That looks like <laughs> She's pregnant. She's addicted to drugs. How often will she be forced to have sex? I'll probably say five or six times, at least a day, per day. Minimum. You know, the pimp will make sure, look, you need to go make this. He can feed her, get her high first, and then make her, like, look, you gotta go sell. You gotta go make me some money. Because it's almost like they have to be drugged up to do what they do. Hey, sweetie, can I give you a, a gift basket? Casey hands out toiletries and her phone number to the women and girls working here. Thank you. You're welcome. What's your name? Queen. Queen, I'm Casey. Nice to meet you, sweetie. I love your hat. Thank you. We're with Four Sarah. How are you? You're very pretty. I'm Casey, and we're just doing outreach, and if you ever need anything, you can call that number, okay? Right, I love your tattoos. They're pretty. She looked young. She did look young. But she could be 18, or she could be... 16. We don't know, but she definitely looks very young. And she, it could be too that she's fresh, you know, like she's freshly on the streets. Once they're trapped in the illegal sex industry, it's a brutal, often short life. They're getting beat up. We've had girls who had all their teeth knocked out. They don't have any teeth. You know, how can they get off the streets and go get a, a decent job when they can't even smile? Sweetie, sweetheart, I have something for you, a gift. No? All right. Hello. But sometimes, Casey makes a connection. A 16-year-old girl calls for help. Can you go there tonight? My room is up on Friday, and I, I don't have no food. I'm hungry. I had an eight yesterday, okay. and I ate a four for four. I don't have no money. I don't have anything. I'm hungry. I don't have a no bus there. A safe house is arranged. It's exhausting work, but Casey's past drives her on. How do you keep doing it? Why wouldn't you not? Like, once she, like, it's like, everything I've been through in life, the abuse, being molested, running away, quitting school, using drugs, and to see where I am today and just see that that could have been me, you know what I mean? Like, why not? Backstage at the Pink Pony Strip Club, the dancers get ready for another shift. Atlanta has a thriving adult entertainment industry, and those in it are easy targets for traffickers. Here, though, the woman in charge is determined to make sure no one is working against their will. We have things on our application, uh, things that I can't overly disclose because I don't want everybody to know all of our tricks of helping protect the girls. But there's a lot of things, even from the front door, of protective measures that we do. Uh, to stop pimps trying to get into the club. Stop pimps from getting into the club and stop 
pimps trying to get their girls into the club. Um, because once a girl gets in the club, then it can further spread a solicitation and recruiting other girls as well. Five major motorways converge on this city, making it easy to move and hide trafficking victims. But a network of lorry drivers called Truckers Against Trafficking is trying to stop that. We're out here 24 hours a day. We're, we're places that this is going on. The truck stops, the rest stops. When a truck comes in for delivery the night before and he's sitting there taking his 10 hour break, there are people that are bring girls to customers and work them right there in the parking lot. Stephen Richardson, like thousands of his colleagues, has learned to spot the signs and call a national hotline. These girls approach you in the truck. You know, it's simple questions you can ask them to find out. And the main thing is, uh, do you even know where you are? If they don't know where they are, if they look drugged, look for tattoos showing markings that they belong to someone. They, they mark these girls like, like they're pieces of material. It's greed, just flat out greed to me when you could get up and make an honest day's living, but you'd rather do it on the sweat of someone else's back, especially young kids. That's, that's just disgraceful. Atlanta's airport is the busiest in the world and useful cover for traffickers. Flight attendant Donna Hubbard helps train people in the industry to watch out for potential victims. And like so many of the women who told us their stories, she is also a survivor. I was traded for guns. I was traded for weapons. I was traded for drugs. I was traded when it just to discipline me, sometimes to punish me. Um, I was beaten and left for dead three times. People always think, you know, why don't, why doesn't she just leave? Why don't they run away? Where would you go? And how would you get away with everything that you have? Um, of course, you, you will leave everything, and some women do. They leave their children behind, they leave everything behind. To live. And at, at the last point of my life, when I realized I was not gonna be able to get away from them, I wanted to live, and I wanted my children to live, and I wanted a better life. So my way out was to go to prison. I have been arrested 27 times. I went to jail seven times. And that last time I knew that I was gonna to have to go to prison or they were never gonna leave me alone. I made sure that my children were safe. And when we were arrested, I did not allow them to bail me out. Sex trafficking overwhelmingly affects young people, often children. In Georgia, charity campaigns like this one focus on reducing the demand for child sex, a problem made worse by the thousands who visit this area for its many big sports events and conventions. The scale of the issue is hard to measure, but the figures that do exist are startling. The latest research that we have says that in, on any given night in the state of Georgia, 300 plus or minus kids are being sold for sex. If you want to know what a purchaser of sex looks like, it looks like you. It looks like me. The statistics tell us that. The arrest records tell us that. The FBI's field office here is home to the nation's largest anti-child sex trafficking task force. Supervisory Special Agent Eric Pauley is grappling with a crime that's constantly morphing, moving online, crossing borders, and hiding in the shadows. It's money. Money is the, is the motivator here. These pimps or traffickers look to exploit children and adults um, primarily for the financial benefit involved in it. The average age of entry for children that have entered this lifestyle is, is, for, is approximately 14 years of age. They're vulnerable children. And these traffickers feed off of that vulnerability, much like any predator does. A term that is commonly used is throwaway children. What happened to you? When Elena Beretti was one of those throwaway children. First week I returned, I was 15 years old. Um, I was a runaway from, from home. Parents were on drugs. And I eventually ran into an actual pimp. And that was when I was about 17 years old. 
she's making a mockery at you if you let her bother you and and she ain't getting no money, you're making a joke out yourself. So Her pimp went by the name money. of Scooby. So he groomed and trafficked Elena, photographing and marketing her for sex with men who knew she was young. You have to be a strong person to live that lifestyle. It's, it's, it's not made for everybody. Everybody thinks, oh, it's, it's easy, you're just laying on your back. You know, it's just sex. And, but it's not just sex. It's your opening your soul to every John you sleep with. At the time, did you have any sense that you were a child and he was sexually exploiting you for commercial gain? At the time, no. When I look back on it now, no, I don't think that. I, I think, you know, I was, I was 17. I was a baby. Eventually, she decided to run, and Scooby ended up in prison, although Elena didn't testify at his trial. Was it hard to leave? It was. It was very hard. Why? Because you've been with somebody that you've put your all into, somebody that has taught you how to survive, make a living. I mean, I made more money than most lawyers, doctors. So it's like, how do you turn on somebody that has taught you so much and has put food in your mouth, showed you a hustle, and you did develop feelings for them? Would you now consider yourself free of that life? No. I fight it every day. I fight it every day. This isn't just a problem in Atlanta. It's estimated that across this country, apart from all the adults involved, up to 300,000 American children are at risk of being trafficked every year tremendously profitable for criminals and with devastating effects for the victims. It's being called America's New Slavery. It was very sad to watch as a video. Yeah, but the situation of sex trafficking, it is not only the problem in America. And uh, according to the United Nations Organization, uh, International Organization for, Organization for Labor, it is estimated over 40 million people are victims of modern slavery, which includes sex trafficking, labor trafficking, and other forms of trafficking globally. And uh, about 12% of them were victims of sexual exploitation. And 99% uh, of the victims of sex trafficking are women and girls around the world. And 88% uh, uh, other victims uh, are involved in other forms of labor in different industries. And uh, there are several thousand uh, victims of sex trafficking in uh, the United States, including in the state of Georgia. But the question is, what is sex trafficking itself? What is human trafficking uh, in general? Uh, it is important to mention here that there is not uh, a universally accepted definition of human trafficking, even sex trafficking. And uh, the definition of trafficking that people most of the time use is coming from the United Nations uh, Palermo Protocol uh, concerning uh, the suppression, the prevention of uh, exploitation of women and girls. And uh, Article 3 of the Palermo Protocol says that Sex trafficking, if I have to paraphrase it, is uh, the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, receipt of persons by the means of threat or use of force or other forms of coercion, abduction, fraud, deception of the abuse of power or of a position of vulnerability, giving or receiving payment or benefit to achieve the consent of the person having control on another person 
for the purpose of sexual exploitation. So this is the definition of uh, sex trafficking according to the international law. However, in America, there, is also, there are also some laws uh, dealing with the issue of sex trafficking. For instance, uh, the US Trafficking Victim Protection Act of 2000, uh, which is also called TVPA, and uh, provide also the definition of what can be understood as sex trafficking, meaning that the recruitment, harboring, transportation, provision, obtaining of a person for the purpose of commercial sex act. And uh, children are also victims of sex trafficking. And uh, sex trafficking under the American law uh, is considered as uh, the severe form of human trafficking. And uh, uh, sex trafficking uh, uh, in which commercial sex act is induced by force or fraud or coercion in which a person involved is a minor uh, is uh, considered as aggravating circumstances. And of course, some of the questions that you may, want, um, you may ask, what is commercial sex act? I think I'll be addressing uh, uh, this question later on. But you can see, uh, it is still important to mention here that commercial sex act means any sex act on account of which anything of value is given or received. Anything of value can be something that is uh, tangible or something that is intangible. Things that, uh, things that are tangible are like money, drug. Things that are intangible include love, promise of love. That is something that people cannot uh, touch. I'll be addressing that later on. And uh, what are the characteristics based on the, def uh, on the definition of sex trafficking? What can we uh, describe uh, as characteristic of sex trafficking? The first element, it is the, acquis uh, the acquisition of the person. And then that acquisition of the person can be done through the recruitment, sale of the person by the family, seduction, deceit, or even peer recruitment. I think uh, in the video we just watched that some, uh, some pimp were using uh, other victims of trafficking to go uh, to recruit uh, other people. So, and there is also another element beside the, uh, the acquisition is the movement. That means that there is a sometimes international movement. That means that the victim of trafficking moving from one country to another, sometimes the movement is happening within the same state, someone coming from California going to Georgia. Even the movement can be conducted within the same state. Someone moving from Atlanta to Albany, even inside of Albany, moving from Dorothy County, uh, County to Lee County. So that means that in that context, the national movement within the border of the same state. Uh, in, that, in, uh, in this context, it means that the same state can be considered as the place of origin, the place of transit, and the place of destination. Because it is a kind of triangular relationship. A person is moving from one place to another place while transiting somewhere else. Another characteristic of, uh, of sex uh, trafficking is uh, the means of coercion. That means that the person who is victim of sex trafficking is lacking free will to consent to act of uh, exploitation subjected against her or him. The, uh, the use of means of coercion include abduction, fraud, deception, abuse of power. And uh, it is important to mention that in the case of child sex trafficking, there is no need to have the presence of means of coercion. That means that there will still be se child sex trafficking even if uh, no means of coercion were used against a child because a child uh, cannot give free consent under the law. And even the consent of the parental authorities will be irrelevant to justify sex trafficking. The pimp or the person exploiting children 
for sexual exploitation cannot say, well, the parent has agreed for their child to be involved in prostitution or pornography. That is not a justification. And uh, the, another element is uh, exploitation. Uh, exploitation, it is uh, one of the most important elements speaking about uh, trafficking in general and uh, sex trafficking in particular. And uh, sexual exploitation include using of a person for commercial sexual act, which is include prostitution. That means that moving a person from a place X to a place Z for the purpose of prostitution. Or using a person to produce or to execute uh, pornography. That is also considered as a commercial sexual act. And uh, here is some of uh, the, uh, the definition of pornography, meaning that using a person, uh, any representation of the person uh, uh, for the purpose of getting some benefit which can be tangible or intangible. So in summary, that is how sex trafficking can be described. That means that in one end, you have the movement, a recruitment. The recruitment can be done through social media, online, and uh, sometimes there are some classified uh, websites online where people can be recruited. Uh, sometimes person-to-person -person contact. There is uh, the transportation, transfer, harboring. And uh, you also have a means of coercion, threat, use of force, fraud, deception. And uh, as I said early, no need for means of coercion when it comes uh, to children. And then you have exploitation, that means a commercial sexual act. That means that it can be prostitution, it can be uh, pornography. Then it means uh, sex trafficking. This is uh, a summary of what we can understand uh, as sex trafficking. But another question is that, uh, about the causes of sex trafficking. What are the causes of sex trafficking? One of them, we can say that uh, economic factor to explain sex trafficking, that means that most of the time is poverty or unemployment of adult. And then that can lead to sex trafficking or poverty or unemployment of the parent, of the child parent. Another factor uh, leading to sex trafficking it, uh, can include non-economic factors, for instance, family dysfunction. And then, according to, uh, uh, to statistic, uh, girls uh, running away from their home for an happy situation uh, are more likely to be subjected to sexual exploitation. That is coming from the National Center for Missing and Exploiting Children in America. Uh, another element of family dysfunction is also child abuse and neglect in the family. Because a child is uh, subjected to abuse at home and the child may think, well, uh, she's not uh, loved, therefore she's going to look for love outside. And then by going outside, and the ch child uh, becomes more vulnerable to exploitation. There are also some psychological and emotional difficulty leaking to prior childhood abuse. That means that a child or a person who was uh, abused uh, in the past is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, she's more, I mean, those people are more uh, uh, at risk of being uh, exploited again. And uh, there is also high demand for, from sex buyers that also uh, encourage, uh, encourages uh, sex trafficking. And, uh, this is what I can explain, uh, I, can, I can use as an illustration. That means that you have buyers that are called Jones. These are the ones who are fueling uh, the market with money. And uh, se uh, sex trafficking is considered as a 44 billion uh, business. And the buyers are dealing with sex traffickers. Sometimes they're called pimps. That means that they're intermediary trying to bring girls uh, to the buyers and they exploit the, vi uh, the victim to earn revenue from the buyers. And the pimp or the sex traffickers take the victim. And victim can include boys, girls, who are sold or bought for profit. And then that means that it is a cycle. Buyers, 
sex trafficker victim. And it is a cycle. Uh, consequences of, uh, of sex trafficking. There are some health-related consequences. That means that the victim are at risk of uh, getting contaminated with uh, HIV AIDS or other sexually transmitted disease. And they can also spread uh, HIV to the, uh, uh, to the buyers. There are also physical abuses as, consequ uh, as consequences. That means that withholding food because sometimes the trafficker refuse to provide food to the victim or medical care. And sometimes they force them uh, to have abortion because uh, victims have to be involved every day uh, to sexual activities. Therefore, if they are pregnant, uh, it can prevent them from having sex. They, therefore, most of the time, they are forced to have uh, abortion. And sometimes, if they don't want to comply, they are getting beat. They physically uh, assault them. There are also educational consequences concerning sex trafficking. That means that lack, uh, lack of access to school because a victim is spending all day being involved in commercial sex, uh, sexual act. That means that victim don't have time, uh, doesn't have time to go to school. And then not going to school, the person will stay poor. And then that will be the very same cycle, uh, cycle of poverty and uh, discrimination even of abuse. Uh, another consequence I can say, uh, sex trafficking victims are offered, uh, there are also some economic consequences because the victims are not free to negotiate the price. It is the pimp or the traffickers who are negotiating the price on their behalf. That means that they can say, well, I want $5 to have sex with the victim, and the victim cannot say, well, I want 15 They don't have that possibility. And also some psychological effect of sex trafficking. That means that stigma, uh, stigma, uh, stigmatization by the society. And, and sometimes the victim uh, don't want to go back home because they are portrayed uh, wrongly because they have been involved in sexual activity. And there are also some legal consequences. Uh, until most recently, uh, I mean, not in America, but in other, uh, other places, victims of sex trafficking can also be prosecuted because some of them who, uh, who have uh, uh, illegal status can be prosecuted by immigration law enforcement. And sometimes uh, sex traffickers are using uh, that threat uh, against them to say, well, if you don't want to be involved in, sex, uh, in commercial se uh, sexual activity, I'll be informing police officer or immigration officer about your uh, illegal status in the country. And then it's also used uh, about that uh, against them. Uh, of course, there are also some punishment uh, against those who are involved uh, in sex trafficking, specifically sex trafficking. For instance, under the federal law, uh, the, traffic, uh, the TVPA, uh, when the victim is uh, under the age of 14, uh, the penalty ranges from 15 years to life imprisonment and the fine. And when the victim is uh, between 14 and 17, it is uh, 14 years uh, of, imprison uh, of imprisonment to I mean, life imprisonment. And then also, when uh, there are means of coercion used against the victim, then the punishment can increase 15 years to life imprisonment and fine. That is at uh, the domestic level. But uh, in Georgia, here, uh, uh, the state also adopted some, uh, some legislation concerning sex trafficking. And uh, for instance, uh, the Georgia Code, uh, paragraph 16, uh, 546, uh, who are, uh, that has uh, some stipulation discouraging sex trafficking, also increasing the punishment. That means that in Georgia, when the victim is an uh, uh, adult, uh, the punishment uh, varies between 10 to 20 years in prison with a fine up to 100,000. If the victim is a child, uh, it is of 25 years in prison and uh, a fine up to 100,000 or both. And uh, 
the Senate in Georgia also adopted uh, uh, a bill uh, requiring all government buildings and websites to post uh, the human trafficking hotline notice uh, with the phone number uh, to the National Human Trafficking Resource Center. Uh, sex trafficking uh, victim protection. That means that victims uh, of trafficking also need some protection. Uh, some of the protection include non-prosecution, for instance. That means that uh, under the American law, a uh, victim of trafficking, uh, trafficking related crime cannot be prosecuted. That is a good element. And also victim protection, uh, victim witness protection. That means that a uh, victim uh, can provide their testimony in camera. They don't have uh, to face uh, the trafficker or video screening for testimony or use of uh, pseudonyms or initials in order to hide uh, the identity. Of, uh, of the victim who is uh, accepting uh, to testify against uh, the traffickers. There are also some civil uh, standing. That means that the victim of sex trafficking can also file for civil uh, suit uh, to collect some damages against uh, traffickers. Uh, with uh, the, TV, uh, the TVPA, uh, there are also some immigration relief for the victim of sex trafficking, even though they are illegal in America they can still be entitled uh, to, uh, to stay in America under the uh, T visa or U visa for victim of uh, sex trafficking. These uh, protective measures uh, are implemented in order to encourage the victim to come forward and then to testify against those who are exploiting them. But the question is that who should we contact if we have information of a friend of a family member uh, who, who is uh, subjected to sex trafficking. But before answering that question, it is important to mention here that universities and colleges uh, are not safe haven uh, of act of sex trafficking. I think uh, in April, uh, Arizona State University Police Department warned its student concerning uh, the presence of sex trafficker in college parties. That means that they're trying to recruit uh, some student when their parties organized at university. So that means that university, including e even here, I mean, I don't have any evidence about here. I mean, uh, students are still uh, at risk of being uh, recruited or subjected to sex trafficking. Therefore, if you know someone who is involved in any form of human trafficking, you can call these numbers. Uh, there is a hotline number, uh, one 373 788 And there is also another number that is not appearing on the TV. It is uh, for the treatment care, treatment and care of uh, the victim. Uh, this uh, is about uh, the Georgia Cares. The phone, the phone number is 1-844-842-4444. Uh, so these are the contact or the numbers that you can call if uh, you have any information about a victim of sex trafficking. This being said, I thank you for, for your attention and then I'm open to any questions that uh, you may like to ask. Yeah. I think oh, that, is a, that is a very good question. Uh, under the international law or even under the domestic law here in the United States, there are some clauses of collaboration and cooperation between law enforcement. That means that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the Palermo Protocol against sex trafficking is compelling states to collaborate, or countries to collaborate, uh, in, uh, in, the, uh, in the context of prosecuting those who are involved in sex trafficking. I don't know who knows uh, 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 I mean, at the international level, there is also uh, international police, Interpol, who is also collecting information about different acts of trafficking happening around the world, and then they are sharing information uh, with uh, local authority on that. I don't know if I answer your question properly. Yeah. And sometimes uh, it is important to mention here that 
it is difficult even to detect acts of sex trafficking because most of the time acts are happening behind the closed door. Therefore, it is difficult to detect that. How do, how do we balance this conflict? You know, watching the video, the, 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 about, I think, the first five minutes of the video, at the background there, I saw hotels, um, commercial um, concerns, and I saw these girls hanging around. So common sense tells me that that is the location of business for these girls and for these pimps. So how do we balance the privacy interests, the commercial interests of legitimate businesses like hotels, and also the law enforcement aspect of trying to reduce um, the prevalence? Can we raid them? Can the government conduct raids like they do for example, immigration rates or um, uh, gangsters or drug situ situations, drug areas where they do raids. Is there anything like that? Yeah. I think uh, your question is very interesting. So that means that you are trying to, uh, to talk about uh, right to privacy and then in the context where uh, it may be known that some victim of sex trafficking uh, in the hotel, so uh, you are trying to find out the parallel with that. That is very uh, that is a very good question, and everybody can ask that question. But in America, for instance, uh, the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution is talking about the right to privacy. That means that uh, uh, the the state or law enforcement should have probable cause before searching uh, an apartment or a property. So that means that. Uh, the police officer cannot just go and ask the hotel tenant to open the door and check if the victim of sex trafficking hidden inside. So that means that they need to have a probable cause and then to even have uh, the warrant in order to conduct the search. And the warrant can only be issued by a magistrate judge and the magistrate judge must have the probable cause. So that is also some legal difficulties trying to balance uh, between the right to privacy uh, and the need to enforce the law and therefore discourage the pimps who are using or uh, exploiting children in the hotel. I think your question is uh, very interesting. Yeah. Another question? Oh, go, go, go ahead. Um, I know that like, there are um, the victims of uh -huh. Um, victims of sex trafficking is like very young so like the, for instance like the lady in the video when she finally became free she was saying like she wasn't really free from the lifestyle because it still like replays in her mind every day so I guess my question is like are there any programs to help the victims that like come out or to help them get into like the normal society instead of going back to their lifestyle eventually like is there any outside help very good question so you're trying to ask about uh, some, uh, some programs uh, uh, to help a uh, survivor of sex trafficking. I think there's, there are many organizations, I mean, under uh, the anti-trafficking laws, uh, there are stipulations uh, concerning providing uh, medical care or psychological care to the victim of sex trafficking. And uh, also there are organizations uh, helping victims of sex trafficking even here in Georgia. So that means that you yeah, are helping them because there is a trauma associated with sex trafficking because some of them have been forcibly involved uh, in commercial sec uh, sexual act. So that means that yeah, there have been some victims receive uh, uh, psychological care, medical care, depending on the needs. Yeah. Uh, bless you. Mm -hmm. By the victim can equally be the perpetrator. Be the perpetrator of sex, sex trafficking. Can someone sex traffic his or herself and claim he is a victim?
say that, okay, some victim, some perpetrator was used to be the victim themselves. So that means that for someone who was a uh, traffic uh, uh, at a young age and then growing up in <coughs> the industry, and then they start recruiting. The recruitment is uh, an act of sex trafficking, recruiting and encouraging. Yeah. So now the question is that uh, how to prosecute such a person yes. who was a victim? That is the complexity of the question. Can, can we prosecute such a person as a perpetrator or can we see that person as a victim who is only replicating what uh, had happened to him or to her? That's a very good question. So that is uh, the complexity of the situation. Unfortunately, I can confess that I don't know what, what is the good, the, the good answer to that question, but uh, the questions are very important. Can we see them as a perpetrator or should we see them as a victim? Well, as a, a human rights lawyer, I speak as a human rights lawyer, I think we should consider them as a victim because they have been victim. That means that they have been victimized uh, all the time. So what they are performing, it is uh, what they have been subjected to. How can you uh, severely punish someone who is a victim himself or herself? So, I mean, that is uh, uh, my point of view, uh, assessing the, the issue from the, human, uh, from the human right perspective. Yeah, but I think uh, this, uh, the question is uh, very complex and uh, very interesting. Uh, I'm sorry to disappoint you by not giving you a good answer. Yeah. Another question? If not, thank you very much for coming.